Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well on this fantabulous, fantabulous Wednesday. That's it. It's the midweek hump. It's still the midweek hump, and I finally know what day it is. Finally know what day it is. Well done, Harsh. Well done. Well done, you legend. The man who always knows what day it is. And we're going to get straight into a bit of meat and potatoes, because we're just going to be talking about something very, very briefly. And that is... What? In... <laughs> With respect of alibis, I'm finding it as we kind of now move into another period of the Idaho 4 trial, or pre-trial battle, if you like, it's now all come down to this alibi issue. First of all, it was the, you know... the, the surveys and whether they were going against whatever rules that bill thompson can make up and now it's about saying that the alibi that brian koberger has come forward with um is not 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 good enough we'll, we'll say that it ain't good enough and i suppose what i want you to do all you guys out there who are a lot smarter than me a lot smarter than me and don't take much what would what do they want what do they want because what it seems to me is that what they're saying is in 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 accordance with Idaho law, not not the law in general, because in the US we know that from state to state they can kind of make it up as they go along, and that makes for some states to be a lot nicer to live in and some states to not be as nice to live in. But let's talk about Idaho and Idaho law, or as I like to call it, Idaho. And look, I know that some people say Idaho's a lovely place, and maybe some places in Idaho are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But this place, not so much. I wouldn't ever move there, and I certainly wouldn't be sending my kids to school there. Certainly not. Not unless I wanted them to either get murdered, touched up, or sold, or something. But anyway, I digress. But I think the point being is, there is a situation where law enforcement have said this person did this crime we believe this person did this crime so then what that does is it splits the room because it makes everybody who trusts in law enforcement trusts in the system to believe that law enforcement done their job they've done it and they got their guy so they're just seeing all this as delaying inevitability and people become quite frustrated with it and i still struggle to get people to say if they turn around and say yeah brian koberger definitely did it i did that poll again i did that poll again and between the people saying that they believe there's enough factual evidence out in the public already and people who don't know that made up 25 percent. and the last i looked at it earlier on today there was over three thousand people on it literally in 24 hours 20 three three thousand people and 25 percent of them people either haven't got a fucking clue or a flat out saying that there's enough facts already in the public domain that proves brian's guilty and deserves the death penalty but they still can't literally put into a into a message that this is why they believe Brian Gobos should face the death penalty. And the, those that do try and attempt it are still going down the route of the car. His car was seen. It's not been released as factual information that his car was seen. And the, but the biggest bone of contention is definitely the DNA and the knife sheath. People have turned around and said, explain to me how the knife sheath could have got there with his DNA on it, and I will, you know, I'll accept that perhaps he could be guilty, perhaps he could be innocent, sorry. And it is easy to explain that DNA away. It's easy to explain by just simply saying the, the fucking thing was either placed there, you know, planted there, whether it be by law enforcement or someone else put it there, or... Or they fabricated the DNA results. They 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 done it that way. Again, it was planted, but do you know what I mean? It, it could have happened. And to turn around and say there's absolutely absolutely no way that could have happened is is naivety. Naivety at its best. I'm not saying that definitely did happen, but what I'm saying is you can't 100% say that it definitely didn't. And the things that we're seeing with respect of Bill Thompson freaking out whenever something comes forward that seems to touch on an alibi. This alibi, has he seems scared of that entire principle. He seems scared of it. 
And they're, they're now trying to block Cy Ray coming forward and being able to extrapolate on what Ann Taylor has started talking about. They're trying to close the, the stable door before the horse bolts, so to speak. But what, I'm, what I suppose the question is, is what, what would make Brian Koberger's alibi any different than the likes of Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk, for instance? Because if law enforcement hadn't have found Brian Koberger, if there wasn't a Brian Koberger for everybody to focus on, who do you think people would be focusing on now? Bearing in mind that most of the information that has come out has come out subsequent to Brian Koberger being charged with the crime. You know, we've found out about other bits and pieces on the peripheral. Whether it's it, whether it's true or not is <laughs> it's irrelevant, isn't it? Because we don't know what's true and what's not. Who are we to genuinely say what's true and what isn't true? But there are a lot of things that are floating around on the peripheral of this crime. And if you remove Brian Koberger from the equation and then start looking about, what do you think would would the alibis be that exists and how would they differ from Brian Koberger's alibi? There is a fine line between an alibi and simply a lie. And with respect of Brian Koberger, his alibi from the, if you strip it down bare bones, it's so ridiculous that it's believable because if you, on one hand, people are saying that he planned this for months, planned it, planned it, planned it. He stalked them. That's what, even though the state have turned around and said that he weren't stalking them, people still think that there was, that it was a play on words, and Bill Thompson didn't mean that he flat out weren't stalking them. And you could argue that there must have been, if Brian Koberger was the person who did it, you must admit that there must have been some element of stalking. There just isn't any proof of it. Not yet. But I suppose what I'm getting at, again, if you remove Brian Koberger from the equation and you, you factor in... <sighs> How could he have planned all this and had such a shit alibi? <laughs> Surely, at the very least, he'd have had some alibi set up in place. Something, somewhere. Wouldn't he have just left his phone at home playing on a film? But anyway, I digress. But I, I ask you again, if Brian Koberger was not found, if he wasn't the person who the finger got pointed at, what alibi would Bethany Funk Dylan Mortensen have had? Would they have? Would it just have simply been enough because they were together to corroborate each other's story? She didn't do it. She was with me, and she didn't do it because she was with me. Do you see what I mean? The fact that Moscow, Idaho, and Bill Thompson are saying that his his alibi doesn't reach the specificity that it needs to in order to be acceptable. I find ludicrous. And I also feel that they knew this all along. I will stand by what I said. And that is why we have not heard of any recordings, any written statements from Brian Koberger's interviews or anything like that. And even things like the 911 call that we don't hear. Things are generally hidden when they're pertinent to the case. And things are also normally hidden when they could shaft you. And I believe that Brian Koberger walked into the law enforcement office openly and had a discussion because he felt safe to have a discussion because he, he felt he had nothing to hide. But by opening up and explaining what he was doing, he tied a noose around his neck and jumped and popped his head off, which is pretty much what Idaho are going to do to him if they get their own way. But I want you to tell me down below. Like I say, you guys who are smarter than me. Again, you can't have your cake and eat it. You either believe wholeheartedly that Brian Koberger did it. Absolutely. It's been proven. You don't need anything else. You know he did it. Which not anybody who is sane in the head can honestly say that Brian Koberger has been proven to have done this crime beyond a reasonable doubt. Now he could. It could happen but it hasn't so far. So with that in mind, I just want you to think of alibi. So in terms of an alibi, what would others around this case have as alibis? Be interesting. 
to know your thoughts. And I'll catch you all tomorrow. In court, actually. We're going in court together. Be there.